just over the, the week is my uh, pleasure that James has written some songs for us. Uh, I'll let you know about what happened this week. Yeah. Um, cool. Thanks, everyone. I don't talk into that one. How's everybody doing this afternoon? A little tired after a long week? Couple things got announced this week. All right, one or two. Um, well, first, before we begin, uh, so this is the week in review, except for Friday. Um, <clears throat> And um, so it's meant to be kind of just a little bit of lighthearted fun at the end of the week. Probably your brains are a little, I know mine is, a little full from all of the deluge of information, um, especially this particular week. Um, so we're going to try to keep it a little, a little light, a little fun, do a couple tunes, talk a little bit, and at the end we'll do some Q&A, which is kind of an AMA. Um, or A-M-A-A, -A -A. almost anything. All right, so let's do some, a little tune here. I think we're tuned up. All right. Before we begin, did anybody go to that little thing we did last night? Thank you so much for coming. We had a blast, um, and hope you did too. This is a lot more scaled down, by the way. <clears throat> nope. gonna do till the keynote and most of the sessions are through it's thursday afternoon so i'm bringing you the dub dub 2019 weekend review they introduced xcode 11 gonna send xcode 10 up to xcode heaven they demoed all the things you can do with it. I downloaded the beta, it unexpectedly didn't quit. <laughs> Did it fail for anybody out there? Raise your hands. Just a couple crashes, that's not bad for a beta. They showed us a brand new pro display, meticulously crafted in every way. Whoa, it'll set you back about five grand for another thousand bucks they'll even throw in a stand. <laughs> Swift UI came just in time to bring us a different paradigm. I just say I do declare Look on the screen, the views are already there. Yeah. Sign in with Apple sure sounds great. For users to privately authenticate. It'll work with face and touch ID because Zuckerberg already knows too much about me. Well, now we know what Apple's gonna do Cause the keynote and all of the sessions are through It's Thursday afternoon and I just brought you The Dub Dub 2019 Week in Review The Dub Dub 2019 Week in Review Now clearly if we did a verse about every announcement this week, we'd be here till Friday. So, um, hardware. We don't always get a hardware announcement at WWDC. 
And whenever we, we usually don't. It's usually about software. And when we don't get a hardware announcement, the interwebs light up and people complain there were no hardware announcements. Oh, I did. I'm sure this is fascinating for all of you. <laughs> there we go. I think it's on. All right, cool. Oh, yes, people complain. There were no hardware announcements. And then this year, we get a hardware announcement, and people complain anyway. <laughs> but yes, this was announced. And it's very interesting when they've, we've, we've been working so hard. We've redesigned everything. And then they unveil it, and you're like, yeah, that looks really familiar. <laughs> um, it's like return of the cheese grater. Um, but this thing is truly a beast. Um, and my god, is there anything that that thing cannot do? Um, and it made me think about just the last few years in kind of Mac land, how um, it seems like Apple might have lost their way a little bit, especially with pro customers, and how this kind of is a resounding, yeah, we'll do whatever crazy, big, semi-truck, industrial strength piece of hardware that is needed by our pro customers. And it made me think back to um, an interview Steve Jobs did back, um, I guess it was in about 2010, um, when he was talking about trucks. Does anybody remember this? Where he was essentially saying um, that originally trucks tended to be used when it was an agrarian population and they were used for work. And um, then as people started moving to urban areas, things that maybe made driving nicer but weren't necessary for a truck kind of ended up in the auto spot. And so over time, a lot of people needed autos and fewer and fewer people needed trucks. And he said that things like the iPad were more like cars and the Mac was more like a truck. And it seemed to me that like Apple forgot the Mac was a truck for a while. Um, so they've just rolled out like the biggest 18 wheel, Peterbilt, Mac, whatever the heck you want to call it, Mondo truck. Um, so I think they might have that message again. And to me that feels good as a Mac user. Um, and so let's just celebrate that for a moment. Swift UI, any interest yeah. from anyone? Um, so I was, well, first I was completely surprised by it. Um, but it hit me in a way that hasn't hit me something that Apple has like announced in a very, very, very long time. Um, for me, Technology-wise, there are really two giant aha, okay, I'll call them three. Three giant aha moments. Um, one was the first time I saw a Mac. I was like, this was in 1986. The world was using DOS, and I just mind blown. The second was when Apple purchased Next, and Steve Jobs was at Macworld and did an interface builder demo. And it was like, oh, yes, of course. Why wouldn't you write apps that way? That's so much better than what I was trying to do. Um, I don't know. Haven't looked into it enough. But Swift UI might be that third one. Um, and really, when you think about it, um, Craig Federighi was talking about kind of major shifts in development. But he was talking more in terms of from the language perspective with C and Objective-C and Swift. 
I really think we may be at a paradigm shift um, in terms of, because really, since Interface Builder, those ideas have been around in Interface Builder, but we haven't really changed how we build UIs. So to me, Swift UI is um, very exciting. So usually in these talks, we take a little trip in the Wayback Machine. So we're going to go back to 2003, to session 412, Coco User Interface Programming. First, before we even go any further, look at those icons. <laughs> that aqua button, you just want to lick it. <laughs> So this was a year, um, oh, and usually in these, we kind of check in with past James. <laughs> Look at him. Look at all that hair. <laughs> where, did it, where did it go? Um, <clears throat> so past James was in this session, and this session introduced Cocoa Bindings. Has anybody here used Cocoa Bindings? <laughs> yes. I was incredibly excited and thrilled to be able to demo Cocoa Bindings in this session um, because that notion of just connecting up like a model property to the UI and having it just work without me having to do a darn thing was very exciting back in 2003. Um, and to me, Cocoa Bindings never made it to iOS, or tvOS, or watch any of the OSs. It stayed on macOS. Um, so the only place we've been able to do bindings since 2003, or connection of some model-y kind of thing to a UI kind of thing, since I don't think we can use the word bindings anymore to talk about Swift UI, um, is, uh, has been around and very appealing to me, but it's been very disappointing not to see it everywhere that I'm writing code for Apple platforms. So to see these concepts come back in such a big, better, more extensible, more generalized way with Swift UI, like just, I could not sleep on which night? One night I couldn't sleep because of the show, and I was like nerve wracked, but one night I just couldn't sleep because I was like, oh my gosh, this stuff is awesome. And in fact, in 2003, I wrote a little song about this big change in the controller layer. But of course, you can't mention the controller layer without a couple other layers. Um, so I wrote a song in 2003 called Model View Controller. Anybody familiar with that one? Apparently not too enthusiastic about it, but you're <laughs> familiar with it, so that's, that's something, I guess. So what I thought we would do today is, because if you, if you were at the show tonight, we did model view controller, and there's one controller verse. You know, there's a model verse, a view verse, and a controller verse. But model view controller was originally written at the rollout of Cocoa Bindings. So we played it in the session where we did uh, Cocoa Bindings. and. Um, the, I've changed and updated the lyrics to take the cocoa binding stuff out. But in celebration of us being able to more easily connect something from the model to something in the view without doing a lot of work in between, um, I'd like to, if you're willing or interested, to, uh, won't do the whole song because it's, it's a, it's a longish one, but uh, do the verses that I never play around with anymore. Um, but hopefully in them, you'll see how Swift UI for me kind of fulfills this promise that was made back in 2003. So would folks be okay with me playing that? So at this point in the song, assume we've already heard about the model. We've already heard about the view. You've already wondered how, you're wondering now, how data moves between model and view, and I tell you it's the controller. So anyway, here we go.
There's a little more to this story, a few more miles upon this road. Nobody seems to get much glory writing the controller code. Oh, well, the model is mission critical and gorgeous is the view. Well, I might be lazy, but sometimes it's just crazy how much code I write is just glue. And it wouldn't be so tragic, but the code ain't doing magic, it's just moving values through. And I wouldn't be so vicious, but it gets so repetitious doing all the things controllers do. And I wish I had a dime for every single time I sent a text field string value. My view. How we gonna deep six all this glue? My view. Her controller, yeah. Controllers know the model and view very intimately. They often use hard coding, which can be foreboding for reusability. Oh, but now you can connect each model key that you select to any view property. And once you start binding, I think you'll be finding less code in your source tree. And I know I was elated by the stuff they automated and the things you get for free. And I think it bears repeating all the code you won't be needing once you hook it up in IB. Model view. It even handles multiple selection too. Model view. Who, who controller, yeah. And then the last line, model view. Bet I get my G5 before you. Model view, her, her controller. Thank you. So for me, from those lyrics, obviously we're not hooking it up in ID, but we're doing something similar with Swift UI to me that really continues on that promise, so I'm very excited about it. And that's Swift UI. Um, so folks, we're at the show last night. Yes. Um, Thank you for coming out. That, for me, in the week in review, tends to be a big part of my week. Um, we, had over, we had 24 performers on stage, a lot of people in the crowd, and we haven't gotten the merch tally yet, but it looks like we will have raised, thanks to all of you who attended, over $30,000 for the mission of App Camp for Girls. So thank you all for coming out. And is Jean here? And Jean McDonald, founder of AppCamp, is there. Please give her a big round of applause. <laughs> and also, I have to say, the long-suffering drummer of the Breakpoints, John Fox, is here. Give him a round of applause, please. I know, exactly. Maybe I'm the long-suffering person who has John Fox as a drummer. No, <laughs> that's not true at all. Um, so I sent this out, if any, and then it's like, why did he send that out? And the answer is, I didn't get any DMs. Um, but the reason why was, even though it's not a developer feature, um, I was so excited last year when they introduced Memoji. And then I played with Memoji, and I found a couple things disappointing. And I was curious to find out, because I haven't had a chance to install it myself, whether with the dozens of new, or however, the myriad of new stuff with piercings and different hats and hairstyles, whether they've addressed my particular Memoji issue. So Memojis, that's my attempt at a Memoji. Um, I kind of, well, anyway. Memojis, at least in version one, kind of had some difficulty or not enough options for people who were going through, let's say, a, uh, a, like a, a follicular attrition <laughs> transformation. Um, because clearly, that's not true. 
I mean, you know, that's, that's very generous on the top of the head there. <laughs> and then the next thing down I could do is, is that, but that's not, that is not right. For, this is not what, and then the, the next thing after that is like that. It's like, oh, that's, no. <laughs> what do we say to the God of baldness? Not today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, my choices are between this, which is just flat out lying, um, and this, which is, um, I'm just, I can't, I can't, I don't even want to think about it. In fact, let's, let's put that away. Um, so my, the reason I tweeted was I'm curious to know, if, has, does anybody know, have they added any, any baldness transition? What's that? Not really? So apparently I'm going to have to just get a bunch of piercings to distract from the... I think you can file a right off. I can file a right with my pictures. Like, please <laughs> put this hair in. I need it. Excellent. What's that? I could wear... I could always just wear a hat, but then my... Oh, like with the brim down? Yeah, that's... I, I'm sure I could rock that look. No problem. <laughs> Who's that, who's that really odd guy? All right. But my favorite part of these sessions, I love doing the song, I love chatting a little bit, but I also love Q&A. Um, so we have about, about 15 minutes left. We'll call it 10 minutes left. Um, no, because we're going to do a little thing at the very end. Um, but please ask any questions. Hey, thanks for doing this. I would love it every year. Um, my question is, what feature that you saw from Apple that you wish they had not introduced? Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, let's see. You know, I'm really annoyed that the handles on the new Mac Pro are apparently comfortable. Because when I had a Mac Pro, you would hold those things and it would dig into your hands. And if I had to put up with it, everybody should have to put up with it. That's what I say. And if I think of a better answer, I will also answer that later. Any other questions? There's one over here. Oh, OK, over there. Um, um, of being a what? Uh, of contributing to the community and like, getting involved with the community for the first time in these, what would be your advice? Oh, I see. Um, so my advice would be one, uh, definitely like just talking to folks is a good way, like just meeting people. Um, one of my favorite things about this week is just getting to meet a whole bunch of new people, seeing old friends. Um, but for first time, it's probably just meeting people. But also, um, I would say um, contributing to projects. Um, if you're here tomorrow, um, is it tomorrow? Yes. I know at uh, Try Swift, um, they are having folks come in and they're going to like help you set up a Swift install like on your machine so you could actually start working on Swift bugs or features. Um, so that's kind of cool. Like, so anything that you can do that like gets some of your knowledge out into the world, like either like Stack Overflow answering questions, helping people on forums, um, anything of that sort. Anything where you interact with folks and share your knowledge kind of openly, um, I think that's maybe the best way to, like whether it's snippets of code. I, I was playing around and I found this interesting thing. So any of that kind of helps, I think. Um, I, I know, I read that it's no longer in Catalina, is that correct? Okay. Did I, I, I think I read, I mean, I think I, I didn't 
I don't know in depth, but I read somewhere that it was either Quartz Composer or the Quartz Composer framework was either, I think Quartz Composer was gone away, but the framework was around for compatibility purposes. Um, I always thought Quartz Composer was very cool. Um, I took and stuff up. Um, but yeah, I think it's going away, but I don't know for certain. Any other questions about anything? Oh yes, we do. We do a. Uh, G. McDonald and I do a podcast called the Weekly Review, because when you do like a session every year called the Week in Review, it makes sense to make a podcast name that's almost identical for clarity purposes. Um, but yes, and it's a productivity podcast, um, and it has a very short little theme song that people find catchy. If you'd like to hear it. And so the way the podcast came about is I had just read the Getting Things Done book, if people are familiar with that one, by David Allen. I talked to Jean on the phone. She was like, oh, I've tried that like a few dozen times over 15 years, but I'd try it again if I had kind of a, a, a productivity buddy to check in with. And then we said, well, we might as well do it as, well, she said, we might as well do it as a podcast. So the best thing about a podcast is you get to write a theme song. And... Um, so the theme song for the weekly review. You got some things you got to get done and still enjoy a bit of oh, oh, organizational fun. There's a lot of things you got to do. You'll think about them all in the weekly review. The weekly review, yeah, the weekly review sitting down it's all coming back to you the weekly review yeah the weekly review checking out all the things that you gotta do the weekly review yeah the weekly review gene and james are bringing you the weekly review oh, oh. and that's it And um, anybody here familiar with Jonathan Mann, Song of Day Man? So my, one of my favorite things about the, the theme song is that we, uh, I contacted him and he produced it for us. So it sounds much more awesome than that. Um, so I encourage you to check it out. It's theweeklyreview.fm. Just to listen to the theme song is fine. The short version is at the front of the show and the long version is at the end of the show. So thank you for that question. You'll receive your $20 after the show. <laughs> Any other questions? Over here we have one. Oh. Oh, a farewell to iTunes? Uh, <laughs> iTunes, sure gonna miss you. Goodbye. There we go. <laughs> Yes, that's, whew, that was a tough one. I was excited when he was putting mail in iTunes. I was like, oh, God, that's awesome. Hi, um, I wish you all could talk about uh, this kind of fight about Netflix and Apple and uh, the new uh, series that Apple Oh, 
I, well, I can, I don't know. Um, people seem puzzled by that event um, that Apple did, but it seems like, um, so I, 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 I'm a big Disney fan and Pixar fan, and so I go, they have like this big expo, D23 expo, every summer, ha every two years, I'm going to it. And so that event was very similar to other rollouts when they were talking about new events at these other things, and then the, the stars or the famous people come out. So it, didn't, it seemed oddball for an Apple event, but it seemed pretty straightforward. I don't, kn I mean, I, I don't necessarily know enough about those industries to know how it's going to play out. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I, I'll probably sign up for whatever the test period is and see how the shows are. I personally am actually very excited about Disney Plus, which is like, because it's all my favorite stuff and it's like, what is it, six or seven bucks a month, which is not so bad. Um, anyway, I apologize that I don't have more information for you on it. Oh, but one thing I will say about Netflix, like when you go in on Apple TV and Netflix and now they have that chung -chung kind of sound that hits you, it always reminds me of like the law and order sound. <laughs> and I'm always expecting to get like indicted or something right after, I'm like, in the world of streaming, there are two different notes. Do you have any particular opinion about combining frameworks? Um, I honestly have not had enough chance to look at it. I mean, from what I, I no, I don't actually. I'd just be blathering about something I, I know it's called combine. And I know it lets you combine stuff coming in, and it's kind of re reacty. But um, that's all. I, I think. So I don't have a, a, a good opinion on if it's good, bad, or whatever. Well, one thing I will say, though, is I am really happy to have something <laughs> like that as an official framework coming from Apple. That I would definitely say, because Otherwise, you have to pick from maybe some third-party thing that does something similar, and then it's the nice thing is you know if they just came out with it, it's they're they're going to support it for a long time, and yeah, that's not always the case with some third-party stuff. That'd be the only thing I could say. Yes. Uh, with the 64-bit transition finishing up with Catalina, what 32-bit app or tool are you going to miss the most? Oh, the Adobe Updater. <laughs> I love that. This, this is, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. How do you feel about Catalyst? That's a good question. Um, I think I feel better about Catalyst than I did before WWDC reading bunches of tweets. Um, so it sounds like it's like it's it's more Mac-y than we might have thought about thought it was going to be. So I think it, I think it's interesting. And again, um, one thing for me about Dub Dub Week is that you get all the announcements, you get that first drop of the OS and every and all the Dev tools and what have you. Um, but then, even then they take feedback as they're driving to GM. So it's almost like you, you need to dig into it and then also see what issues people bring up that they actually address before it's, you can really make, have a, good, like a really good opinion about what it is. Now you could say like, oh, this doesn't look like, like you can have, well, a mushy opinion about it, but it's hard, at least for me, hard to have a strong opinion. Well, it, it seems divisive somehow. Like, it's like, I, I don't know. If, I feel like I'm about to be impaled. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's very, but um, 
But Catalina is a nice place. I think they named a dressing after it too, so that's it's a favorite of mine. Um, you don't see it on menus that often, though. Yes. Do you know the song by the Four Cracks called "26 Miles Across the Sea"? No, I'm too old. Um, it's about I guess we could do "Stump the Band" too. Yes. Um, I. I'll, I'll sing it. Yeah. How does it go? Here, give, give him the mic. I'm, I'm sorry, your name is? Joel Norvell. Joel Norvell, everybody. Now I know that song. Thank you. Any other questions about anything in particular? Well, that's good, because actually looking at my watch, it looks like we have time to do one more song. <laughs> to an enthusiastic audience. Always love the enthusiasm. <clears throat> and it's a song. Born in the tropics. And I hope you all will sing along. Are you willing to sing along? Yes. It's Tiny Bubbles. No, it's the leaky song. Um, and yeah, the swift verse was added five years ago somewhere around this week, the day Swift was announced. So I'd like you all to sing along. And for those of you who might not be familiar with this song, it's a little Hawaiian tune charting the history of memory management in the Cocoa Frameworks. Oh. I want to make a lot of leaky coal. Oh, me and I want to make a lot of leaky coal. Well, I retained and released to keep my memory policed. Me and I want to make a lot of leaky coal. Sometimes my mind it will slip, causing some objects to drip. Me no wanna make a lot of leaky coal. I want a mark running high, auto releasing was why. Me no wanna make a lot of leaky coal. I popped a pool off the stack to get my memory back. Me no wanna make a lot of leaky coal. Everybody sing. Oh, and clap. Me no wanna make a lot of leaky coal. Oh, Wanna make a lot of leaky coal. Then I was garbage collected, memory scanned and inspected. We don't wanna make a lot of leaky coal. Oh, but it's runtime price, bad for embedded device. We don't wanna make iPhone go slow. We've managed memory longer than I can recall. We look for better ways to handle it all. And though the path that takes us there may change, our destination remains the same. Now everybody sing it loud. Oh. I want to make a lot of leaky coal. Oh, I want to make a lot of leaky coal. Then I refactored to arc, it was more than a lock. I want to make a lot of leaky coal. A slick compiler extension based on naming convention. I want to make a lot of leaky coal. 
The tide started to drift, now the current is swift. We know wanna make a lot of leaky co. Square brackets were gone, but reference cycles lived on. We know wanna make a lot of leaky co. Everybody, oh, we know wanna make a lot of leaky co. Oh, I wanna make a lot of leaky. One more time with feeling. Oh, I wanna make a lot of leaky. Oh, I wanna make a lot of leaky. I wanna make a lot of leaky. I wanna make a lot of leaky. Thank you very much. And um, actually, this is also the album art for the Leaky Song, which is available on iTunes and Apple Music, as is the album Backtrace. But one thing I wanted to point out is that um, the holes in the outrigger canoe are explicitly um, a visual callback or reference to the, um, the Leaks tool, the object alloc tool, um, way back when, the performance tool. So. Yay. <laughs> Y'all really needed to know that. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. You've been a kind crowd. And um, there's a happy hour going on outside those doors. Thank you so much for joining me for this Week in Review.